This current challenge is called number line jumps. It's going to be different from the other challenges I've tackled in the past, because in this video, I want to focus on the mathematics behind this challenge. Here's an illustration of the problem. We're going to have two kangaroos, kangaroo one and kangaroo two. Kangaroo one starts at position zero, and every jump that kangaroo one makes is three meters long. So after the first jump, he's going to be at meter three, then after the second jump, the distance is going to be six meters. Then after the third jump, it's going to be nine meters. And after jumping a fourth time, it's going to be 12 meters. On the other hand, kangaroo two is going to start at position four. So four meters ahead of kangaroo one. And kangaroo two jumps two meters at a time. So after the first jump, kangaroo two is going to be six meters away from the starting point of kangaroo one. After the second jump, it's going to be at position eight. After the third jump, it's going to be at position 10. And after a fourth jump, it's going to be at position 12. The question here that we want to answer is, can both kangaroos meet each other at some points? In this challenge, we're going to receive four parameters. The first one, x1, denotes the starting position for kangaroo one, and I'm calling kangaroo one k1. And the second parameter called v1 is going to be for the jump distance of kangaroo one. So that means three because kangaroo one jumps three meters at a time. X2 is for the starting position of kangaroo two, and V2 is for the jumping distance of kangaroo two. So what I just explained on the previous screen with the image is pretty much what you see here. Kangaroo one starts at position zero, jumps three meters at a time. Kangaroo two starts at position four, jumps two meters at a time. And after four jumps, they are both going to be at the 12th position. So they'll be able to meet each other. If they were to continue, however, then kangaroo one would be at position 15 and kangaroo two would be at position 14, at which point kangaroo one will be ahead of kangaroo two. We want to find out if at some point they are going to be at the same position, regardless of where they start and what their jumping distance is. If you've paid close attention to what I've been explaining, you will notice that this is actually a linear equation problem. The standard format for a linear equation is like this, ax plus b equals cx plus d. In this challenge, the jumping distance of the first kangaroo, kangaroo one, can serve as a in our linear equation, and the jumping distance of kangaroo two can serve as c in the standard format. So when we say jumping distance times x is the same thing as when we say ax, and when we say jumping distance two for kangaroo two times x is the same thing as saying cx. Why does this even make sense? To understand, let's look at this here. This is the starting position for kangaroo one, and this is the starting position for kangaroo two. These two values never change in the challenge. Just like in linear algebra, these are like the y-intercepts. They never change. But what changes are the values when they jump. For kangaroo one, the jumping distance is three meters. So after one jump, it's going to be three X. X here is the number of jumps. So after one jump, this 3x is equal to 3 times 1, which will give you 3. After 2 jumps, 3x would be 3 times 2, which is 6. After 3 jumps, this is going to be 3x equals to 3 times 3, and it's going to give you 9, and so on. The same thing applies for kangaroo 2. So to find the answer, we need to solve for x. After how many jumps can they meet each other? And we can find this if we try and solve for x in this linear equation. Let's proceed to solve for x. So now we're going to have the starting position for kangaroo one, which is three. Zero here is the starting position of kangaroo one. For kangaroo two, the jumping distance is two meters at a time. And we have plus four here because kangaroo two starts at position four. So this here plus zero, we can take it out because it's not changing anything. So in fact, this is the same thing as three X equals two X plus four. Now we can remove two X on both sides. We're going to get three X minus two X, which is equal to 1x or simply x and here this is going to get cancelled out we're going to get 0 and we're going to be left with 4. so here we're going to get x equals 4. this here is the answer to our equation you will see that we had the same answer here four jumps was the answer so if x equals 4 it means that both kangaroos are going to meet each other after four jumps now let's look at what would be an invalid result let's say kangaroo one still jumps three meters at a time Kangaroo two also jumps two meters at a time, just like in the beginning. But this time around, Kangaroo one is going to start at position five or five meters ahead of the beginning of the track. Kangaroo two is still going to start 
at position 4, just like in the beginning. Now, logically, they're never going to meet each other. The reason is Kangaroo 1 is jumping faster than Kangaroo 2, just like at the beginning. But on top of that, Kangaroo 1 is starting ahead of Kangaroo 2, because it's starting 5 meters ahead of the beginning of the track, and Kangaroo 2 is starting 4 meters ahead. So if you and I are racing together, I'm running faster than you, and I'm starting ahead of you, there is no way we are ever going to meet each other. So when we try and solve for x here, we will be left with x equals negative 1. So in fact, we're able to solve for x, but negative 1 is not a valid result. So here are two rules to solve this challenge. The first thing is the answer x must always be greater than or equal to 0. If it's less than 0, it means that they are never going to meet each other. On the other hand, if the value of x is a decimal number, like 4.1, 4.2, etc., um, this means it's not an integer, and this implies that they are never going to meet each other on land. They are only going to meet each other in the air when they are jumping. What we want is for them to meet each other when their feet are both on the ground. In other words, when they have completed a full jump. So in order for us to find this, we need to make sure that x is an integer and not a decimal number with digits after the decimal points. So now let's jump into the code here. This is a function, it's called kangaroo. It takes in the four parameters that I talked about here. And now we can proceed to solve our linear equation. Here I'm seeing x1 minus 2 divided by v2 minus 1. If you're wondering how I came up with that formula in code, you can always check tutorialspoints.com. Um, I'm going to try and leave that link as a comment or maybe in the description. But basically, if you want to solve an equation, you can apply this formula here. So here they have d minus b divided by a minus c. It's the same thing as what I have here. So I'll leave you guys to dig into that, but you will see that it works. Now here I have my if statement to cater for my two rules. Was I able to find an integer? So if rest here, this value as a double is the same thing as the floor of itself, then it means it's an integer. Let's say 4.2 is the value for rest. And I want to check if it's the same thing as the floor of 4.2. Now the floor of 4.2 here is going to be 4 as an integer because this is going to get rounded down. So it will be the same thing as verifying is 4.2 equal to 4. And in this case, this will evaluate to false. And if it does, then this is never going to run. Otherwise, if I was able to find an integer, meaning that both kangaroos are going to meet each other on land when their feet are touching the ground, and if my value was greater than or equal to zero, I will simply return yes to indicate that both kangaroos are able to meet each other. Otherwise, if this evaluates to false, then I'm simply going to return the string no. So now let's run this code. We've passed both sample test cases. So now I'm going to submit it and we've passed all of them. So the takeaway from this video is that you don't always have to find solutions thinking only of programming concepts. Always try and search if there is an efficient way of solving a challenge using your existing knowledge of mathematics. So anyway, if you guys like my solution, please subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications, and I'll catch you next time.